So in this video, we will start adding some functionality to our buttons so that we can select a tower by clicking a button and then placing it on on the on the ground by clicking on a tile afterwards. So I would like to add the functionality for picking towers to my buttons itself themselves instead of having it in the in the actual game manager just to uh, get some functionality away from the game manager so it doesn't get too cluttered. So to do this, I will create a new script by right clicking in my script folder, clicking create, selecting C sharp script, and this script is going to be called button. Let's call it tower button. BTN. There we go. So this is our tower button. For now, it only needs to contain the actual prefab for placing the tower. So inside our script here, we can say private game object, game object, and call it tower prefab. And this one needs to be serialized because we need to access it from the editor. And for now, we can just delete, start, and update. So that's all we need right now. When you've done that, you can jump back into Unity. And in here, you need to open up your canvas in the hierarchy, select tower panel, and then open up uh, the tower panel. And here, you need to select all your buttons. You can just click the top one, hold shift down, and click the bottom one. So you have all of them selected. And then you can click add component. And here, you can select tower button by writing tower. So now it, all of the tower buttons has the tower button script on them. When you've done that, you need to select them all one by one and then go to your prefab folder and find um, all your uh, tower prefabs. Then you need to select the storm button and take the storm tower and put it on the tower prefab. And you need to do the same for the rest of the towers, right? And uh, the rest of the buttons. Select the frost button, take the ice tower move here actually I should rename this to frost tower to make it more identical and then take fire button take the fire tower not here and then in the end take the storm tower and sorry take the storm button and add the storm tower down there we already have that it's poison I need so select poison tower and take poison and add it there so now you have added all the prefabs uh, for towers to the buttons so that we can click a button now and uh, now we would know what um, tower to place when we have clicked that button. When that is done, we need to open up our game manager script. So jump back into your scripts and find the game manager script. And in here, we'll actually have to add a new function called pick tower. So let's make a public void pick tower. And the reason that we make this public is because our buttons need to access this uh, function here. So if it was private, they wouldn't be able to access it. And it needs to take in a tower button called tower button. And when you've done that, we need to make a reference so that we can actually um, select a clicked um, click button. So we know what button we have clicked, right? So right now we need to delete our tower prefab up here because this was only temporary uh, and used for testing. So we need to delete this and write tower, right private tower button called tower button or let's call it a clicked button so this is the click button the one we clicked right right before so when I clicked on the first tower then this click button needs to be equal to the first tower so I need to go down here and say this dot clicked button equals tower button so now I've made a reference to the button I just clicked so if we go to the error list, you'll see that it says that um, that game manuscript doesn't contain the definition for tower prefab. And that is correct because we just deleted the tower prefab up here. So instead, we because we moved all the tower prefabs, if you remember, to the tower button here. So instead, we'll have to jump back in here in the tile script where it asks for the tower prefab. He will have to use the current click button instead. So we can actually go back to the game manager and instead of doing like this, we can actually write PROP if you have Visual Studio and tap two times. And then you can take the tower button and replace with the integer and write clicked button here, down here and delete the other one. And the reason that we do like this is because we would like to access this from another script. And basically this is a shorter form of making a, um, what is called a, um, a property. 
and this is an automatic property which is way shorter to write so we can just make sure that we can't set this from another script so we can write private set out here so now we have access to the click button from the other scripts so our um, tile script can access the click button and and get the prefab and place the prefab on the tile now down here it's complaining because we just deleted the other click button we have so we have to replace the C with a capital C so make sure that you only have this line up here with capital C with click button and you have this line down here in your pick tower so what happens you click the button it picks a tower sets a reference into click button here and then we can go to our tile script now we can say game manager at instance dot um, clicked button and on the click button we will have to access the prefab on that button and as you can see right now if I press dot sorry I will not be able to find that prefab and that is because I need to go to my um, tower button script and you can see this one is private so I'm not able to access it so to make sure that I can access it I need to make a um, what is it called a property so I can just right click and say quick actions encapsulate field and I, I don't want to be able to set it I just want to be able to get the prefab I don't want to change it from other scripts so to make sure that I can't change it from other script I simply just take this set and delete it and save remember if you don't have Visual Studio you can just write this code by yourself it's simply just a shortcut to to do this in Visual Studio and the same goes for um, the tile script sorry the game manager here this code here if you can't write it by writing PROP and tap two times well then simply just write the code yourself it's just a shortcut for writing stuff so yeah it, it doesn't really change anything if you write it yourself or if you let the uh, compiler do it for you or the ID do it for you Anyway, now I have made a public property to access the private tower prefab here, which means that I can go to my tile script and say click button dot tower prefab. So now I'm going to instantiate the tower prefab that is connected to the actual button I just clicked because this script is on all buttons. When I click a button, I need to execute this function here on the game manager so that it says the current click button equal to um, the button I just clicked and that means when I click on a tile the tile asks the game manager hey what button did the player just click and then he wants to get and then the game and uh, the tile wants to get the prefab that is connected to the last click button okay so if we jump back here you'll see that we haven't told the buttons which um, what is it called which um, yeah, which function to execute so we need to click on all the buttons and then click on the little plus down here um, let's see um, the little plus down here uh, under under the button script on the tower button uh, sorry under the button script there is an on click event list empty and then there's a little plus in the top right and bottom right corner you click that plus and then we need to take an object and drag into this so we need to do this for one button at a time you click on the storm button and drag the storm button um, actually not the storm button sorry we can actually select all of them and then take the game manager and drag it onto the empty slot where it says non object down here then we can select um, the little drop down here and say game manager and then select the pick tower and, and now we have to select them one by one and take the button itself and drag onto the empty slot here so that each button clicks and sends itself with it to um, yeah sends itself with it so that we know what button we just clicked there we go so now all the buttons here are set up correct I think there was two frost button wasn't there yeah fire was wrong there we go uh, there we go and poison is correct yeah so now when we click a button we ask the two um, sorry when we click a button we ask it to run the function on the game manager called pick tower pick tower asks for a, a button type and it sends itself with it so when we click a button it will call this uh, function on the game manager called pick tower and set the current button we click equal to the click button on the game manager 
Okay, so let's jump back into Unity and give this a try. And you'll see that we'll get an error when we try to do this. So if I play the game and I click the button, then you'll see we get a null reference exception error. And it gets uh, the error in the place tower, um, tower function here, um, which is the function that places a tower on a tile. And it doesn't really make sense that we get that error because we're clicking a button, but when we click the button, it's actually trying to place the tower on the tile behind it before we actually select any towers. So we're actually doing two things here, right? We are clicking a button and placing a tower which we haven't selected yet. That's why we are getting a, a reference exception here. So we need to write one line of code to fix this. So actually in the, what is it called? The tower button script, nope, not tower, sorry, tile script here. We need to make an if statement. So around all this, we need to make an if statement that says if exclamation mark event system, if you can find it, event system. And if you can't find the event system, you can right click on it, click quick, quick actions and click using unity engine dot event system. So then it turns blue. If you can't right click and do that, you simply have to go to the top of the script and write this line of code using unity engine dot event system. So what I just did, just added this line of code up here by itself. But if you have it, aren't able to right click and do that, you can simply just go up and write this yourself. So then you can say current dot is pointer over game object. So this code in here will only execute if the mouse is not over a game object on the uh, on the UI, which means it will only try to place a tower on the ground if the mouse isn't over a button, for example, because the problem right now is the fact that it tries to place a tower on the ground behind the button because we're basically clicking the tile behind the button. So to prevent this, we simply say, well, you would only you should only try to place a place a tower if the mouse is not clicking on a button. So we can actually take all this functionality here, cut it and put it inside this if statement. And then we save. Also, another thing we need to check if is if the click button is null. So we can say and game manager dot instance dot clicked button isn't null. Because else we might get some uh, some uh, errors down here. Um, when we're trying to place something when the click button when, when we haven't clicked the button yet for example because we would try to place a tower on the ground without clicking a button so this line of code actually prevents us from placing a tower when the button is not clicked so let's try now and see what happens nothing happens when i click on um on the ground and if i click a tower now i have selected a tower and i click and place that storm tower now I can just place storm towers everywhere like this. And I can click on the fire button and select and place fire towers everywhere. So now you can see all the buttons are actually working. And let's see what else we have. We have the frost here. Yeah. So now we can place the different towers. But as you can see, I can keep clicking to place towers. And I don't want to do that. I want to be able to click the, this button once, place a tower. Then I would have to click the button again to place another tower. So I can't just keep placing towers forever after I've clicked the button. So let's just fix that little thing before we end this video. It's very easy to fix this and we might as well put a function in place for doing this because we will need to create that function later anyway. So go to the game manager because right now we can only place our towers, but we are going to create a new function called buy tower and it's not going to do anything right now. It's not going to take any credit from you or any uh, currency from you when you place a tower. But it will do that in the future. So make a public void called buy tower. And buy tower function simply needs to say click button equals null. So we have we set our click button to null. And we need to execute this buy tower function at some point. So we can go to our tile script, find the place tower function here. And basically we should actually just uh, set it to um, to, to null. So basically we can just say um, game manager dot instance dot uh, buy tower, but tower. Okay, so that's very nice spelling of me, but tower. Let's go back to the game manager and rename this one to buy tower. 
so maybe you already saw that I misspelled that when I moved on. Um, yes, where were we? We were at the tile script here. So now we have the buy tower function. Um, actually, I think I want to move some things around here. I think I want to take all the functionality in place tower and actually cut it and move it outside this if statement here and then take this if statement and cut it and move it to the on mouse over function and paste it here and move the if statement into here. I hope you got that. We took the if statement down here and moved it up here and put this part inside that if statement. Um, just because I can see that that's going to fit better with the structure later on if we do like this. So this still works exactly the same because the if statement out here is also around the place tower function, which is this one down here. So it's still going to execute exactly the same way. But now we are also calling the buy tower function when we try to place uh, something on the ground. And when we do that, well, then we are buying the tower in the game manager, which says the click button to null. Uh, null. Later, we will uh, use it to take some currency from the player and everything. Yes. So let's uh, try to give this a spin. Let's try to run the game. Run it here. If I take Storm Tower and place it, then I'm not able to click anywhere else to place it. I will need to click the button again to place another tower. And the same goes for the other things here. So I would have to click the tower button every single time I need to pick a new one. And that seems more uh, like normal gameplay in a tower defense game. So I am going to end this video here. I hope you were able to follow along even though I made a few mistakes and had to correct them. Um, in the next video, we will start adding, maybe adding some prices to the towers, I think, um, so that we can actually use a, some currency to place uh, the towers around in the, in the game and put some, some actual values on the towers down here. Um, because as you can see, there are some yellow fields here on the buttons and these are the field or the spaces for the price on each tower. So we'll just give ourselves some currency and then try to be able to place the amount of towers, um, uh, place towers based on that currency. So thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you like my videos, then feel free to share them on your social media or under other places. It will help me out uh, quite a lot if you share my videos so I get some more traffic to my YouTube page. Also remember to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Also remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page, so you all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can support me on Patreon. If you do so, then you can get all the projects that I've ever created um, and you'll be able to use all the assets and everything for anything you want. You can also uh, support me by getting one of my projects as a standalone product by clicking the link in the bottom of the screen. So thank you very much for watching.